Hey everyone, uh, Guao Ren here, also known as Harry. How you going? Today I'm gonna give you some tips, 10 of them to be exact, on how to survive The Last of Us Part 2 Grounded Mode. Now, I understand that Naughty Dog have a bit of a vendetta against its players in saying that they all want them to suffer as much as they can. So by releasing this mode, they have made sure of that. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Cause she's a dumb cunt, that's why, and that's why she's dead. Oh, oh, you wanna kill me? Oh, oh, so much of that, dingo tits. <laughs> so that was only a small snippet of the kind of language I used while playing grounded mode. So hopefully you guys have a much more smooth experience and come out a lot more sane. So before we get into it, let's run over the very standard grounded mode changes. Firstly, you obviously take a lot more damage, as expected, so you want to try not to get shot, but, you know, we'll see how that goes. F*** you, man. F*** this. I'm so over this shit. F*** you, Steve. In addition to that, you also have no HUD now, so you can no longer see your health bar or your ammo on screen. You have to use the weapons cross to be able to see how many bullets you have per gun and how many throwables etc you have, and also your health is indicated by how dark the screen is getting. If it is flashing red or getting even remotely red, it means your health is very low. And what kind of challenge would it be if the game didn't take away your listen mode? You can no longer see enemies through walls and you have to rely on the camera and specific angles to be able to spot enemies from afar. This is why I recommend playing grounded mode after a couple times of playing the game on some easier difficulties because it helps you work out the patterns and how to see enemies and where they're going to be at the times. And of course, in Last of Us tradition, resources are much more scarce throughout this mode. I think it speaks for itself. Conserve your throwables and your big guns for the major boss battles that happen throughout the story, as not having what you need is going to make it even more challenging and sometimes not even possible to do. And lastly, hate to break it to you, but the AI companions are completely useless throughout this mode. They sometimes throw a brick or a bottle or get a kill here and there, but it happens so rarely that you're better off being by yourself. So do not rely on your AI, they are just there for the ride. Okay guys, so those are the major changes Grounded Mode brings. There are a few minor ones here and there, but they're nowhere near as impactful as these ones are. Naughty Dog have done a fantastic job at making the game as realistic as possible, and they reward the player with a special secret at the end of the game in the credits. So do not skip the credits and just watch the entire thing for that surprise. Now, before we get into it, I'm just going to mention one thing. I have heard you can play Grounded Plus. Grounded Plus is basically where you have your upgraded abilities and your upgraded guns, and you can still get the trophy. Personally, I didn't actually think to look this up before starting my Grounded playthrough, so I played Grounded completely from scratch. So, if you can play Grounded Plus and still get the trophy, please do that. Absolutely do that. It makes the game a bit more easier, and I'm just too dumb to have known that. So, Yes, it probably is possible, but don't take it from me, because I have not tried it myself. Okay guys, enough fluff, let's get into top 10 tips to survive The Last of Us Part 2's Grounded Mode. Number 1. Break windows and glass panels before fights begin. Throughout the story, you reach areas you can explore and gather supplies from before having to return where enemies spawn. The radio station is a great example, as you get to explore the area and then you return to enemies spawned. This may seem obvious, but whilst looting, take the extra couple of seconds to destroy glass panels and windows as this can open new pathways when sneaking around enemies. This also saves you from having to destroy a glass panel that may be in your way and alerting enemies, as they have very sensitive hearing in this mode. Number 2. Save healing upgrade for when health is low. Now, you will have a lot of moments where you may not have a med kit or you're one bullet away from being killed. And you know what could save you in that one moment? Your healing upgrade. When you use the healing upgrade, you get a 25% increase and with that increase it gives you that little bit more health that could help you get through an area. It may seem very obvious, but it is very helpful when you absolutely need it. So don't upgrade it out of nowhere, save it for when you're low on health. In addition to that, do not use a health kit if you know a new act is coming. That could be like an early dream sequence or go into a new day. Don't waste a health kit as the game automatically gives you a full health bar. Number three, do not restart checkpoints manually. Now, I'm not too sure how to explain this one clearly as it's a bit iffy, but what I'm saying is if you're in a fight and you've approached it the wrong way and you're currently getting shot at and all you want to do is have another shot, 
do not pause the game and hit restart checkpoint. What Naughty Dog has done, no matter how much health you have, it could be from a full bar, if you hit restart checkpoint, Naughty Dog will strip away all your health so you only have one hit left in you, no matter how much you had beforehand. They punish you for restarting checkpoint. So, if you go into a battle and you're not happy with how you approached it, just simply let yourself get killed. Majority of the time, you will respawn with your normal health. It is the best way to go about it. Like I said, it can be iffy. There is times where you will die and you will suddenly respawn with very little health even though you had more. I'm not sure how the game algorithm does it, but this was the best way I could find. You stuff up, let yourself get killed, try again. Number 4. Know when to let go. Also meaning, do not loot if you don't have to. Now I understand this game is all about finding every material possible and fitting it in that tiny backpack. But, there are so many encounters and fights throughout the story where it's better off just to run for the exit if you can. I know leaving loot behind is very hard and you believe you're going to need it for later, but if you're prepared well and you play well, you can skip areas without having to loot and getting out of dodges a lot better than having to take them all on just to find a pissy little rag. No one to let go, leave loot behind. Ah! Go Abby, go Abby, go Abby! Ah! Number 5. Bricks and Bottles Bricks and Bottles are your best friend in The Last of Us because they have so many uses, from a distraction to a weapon. But, unlike the first game, Bricks and Bottles are a weak distraction against human enemies. They work as normal against infected, but humans are so smart in this game that they now only send one person in a group to check the noise while the rest keep watch. This stops players from getting enemies together and hitting them with a throwable, getting multi-kills. Instead, keep bricks and bottles as a weapon and either throw it or smash it over at human enemy heads and then melee them. It's a one-hit kill. Same works for runners, but unfortunately not quickers and stalkers, etc. You'll have to throw them, hit them again, and then repeat in order to kill them. But if you find a brick or a bottle laying around, don't just skim over it, pick it up. They are your best chance. Number 6. Shoot enemies in the leg. Now, we know that shooting enemies in the head is the most effective way to go about things, but getting a headshot is not always easy, and it also doesn't have every situation where it's going to work. So, by shooting enemies in the leg and then milling them, you actually get a one-hit kill out of it. It kills humans, runners, and stalkers in one hit. Clickers take two shots to the leg and then a melee to kill them. Now, Ellie has an air attack as well that not many are aware of. If Ellie jumps from a high ledge onto an enemy, she stabs him in one hit. This works on clickers, so if there's a clicker below a high area, jump them and stab them. Instant kill, happy days for everyone. And because we're on the topic of discussion, here's this headshot I pulled off in grounded mode. F*** you, ass titties. Just let me go! Oh, oh, dude, I had shot him! Number 7, aim while crouching. Now I understand when you're crouching you can lightly toggle the thumbstick forward to sneak up on clickers, it's just very slow. So if you aim your gun while crouching you can actually move at a much faster pace and you'll be able to get the silent kills that you're after. It makes the game go faster, it makes the kills easier and life's better. Number 8. Don't waste ammo unnecessarily. Now look, that sounds very obvious, of course, if you are fighting enemies and you shoot a thousand bullets and you know you didn't need to, obviously let yourself die and then have another shot at it. What I mean by that is, I only use melee weapons and melee attacks on enemies with no guns. Now, if you have to shoot them, of course do it, if it means you're going to die, but if you can refrain from it, please, by all means. Now, this works for like clickers, stalkers, enemies with melee weapons, those big brute things Abby has to face. Use your melee weapon and use your melee attacks if you have to. The game has made it a bit easier by giving you a dodgy mechanic, which you didn't have in the first game. You had a counter attack, obviously, but not a dodgy mechanic. So there should be no excuse. Master your dodging skills, take on enemies hand to hand. Now, incoming flex, this is what I mean. Number 9, do not max out your medkits. 
What I mean by this is, always have two out of three medkits in your inventory. Everything else you can have all maxed out, that's completely fine. But you will find medkits throughout the story, not frequently, but you do. And the worst feeling on the planet is when you have full medkits, you have full health, and there's a free medkit looking at you right in the face. So the best thing to do is always to have two out of three, but if a situation where you have so much alcohol and rag, and you know crafting one more is not going to hurt, please do it. But refrain from doing it because you will find free medkits along the way. So, keep that in mind guys. And lucky last, number 10, plan ahead. Now what I mean by this is guys, once you've worked out the layout and the enemy patterns of this game when you've played it enough times, you actually work out where enemies start spawning. Now for example, I'll use the radio station for this clip. You come in, you go up to the door where all the enemies are going to spawn, and then you put a trip mine down. Walk a little more back, and put another one down. Now go do the story, blah 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 blah, come back out and see the enemies. You mean, what enemies? You see that one guy? Yep, there we go. And now, this whole area has just been avoided and you can go through peacefully. So, if you know where enemies are spawning, plan to trip mine guys. It's very worth it and it saves you a lot of hassle. Very much use that because that was the best thing I did throughout Grounded. Okay guys, and that concludes my top 10 tips for The Last of Us Part 2 Grounded Mode. I hope you enjoyed that, I hope you learned something new. If you have any tips yourselves to share, please let me know down below, or if there's anything I said that's incorrect, please let me know as well so I can actually brush it up and, you know, learn a bit more myself. I do have a couple more tips I'm happy to share with you guys, and if you want to see that, let me know. I did put a lot of effort into making this video, so a like or a subscribe would be really, really awesome, make me really happy. I just hoped whatever I showed you guys can help you throughout your playthrough. It may not be perfect, but I did what I could. So yeah, guys, best of luck with your grander playthrough, and don't forget, don't skip the credits at the end of the game, because there is a special surprise, and let me know once you've seen it. Thank you guys, thanks for watching, and have a good one. You dog! <laughs> Fucking asshole, I swear to god dog, if you're the thing that killed me for this, in my checkpoint I'll end you. You fucking dog! Oh my god! I fucking got so far as well! Fuck you, you little shit! You're gonna fucking murder all of you now, fucking stealth! Fucking hell, I'm fucking done with this shit!